And I told Faraday straight up, I'm like, if you are coming at me with this energy of, I just need to get off right now, and I just need a climax. Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast, reporting live from my house, The Collective. Um, Today, I am super excited to talk to you guys about something that I have been like, really figuring out on an embodiment level in the last couple days and what is time because right now I've entered a vortex where time is a very funny thing. I feel like I've understood the universal message on a intellectual level for a very long time. Like when you talk about being awake, like I feel like I've been awake for a long time And at the same time, there's so much belief system that we have ingrained in us as a society. And, you know, that's why I always joke like there's levels to that shit. And I talked about this in the last podcast I just made yesterday, which is coming out soon, um, about this, about some belief systems that I have come up with. And I want to like dedicate a whole podcast to this and kind of just let myself go into the channeling state because I feel... This is something that all of us deal with and it goes into the element of like, why are we here? What is the point of existence? But really the programming that I have released is feeling like I need to be in survival mode in order to (laughs) be able to live my life, right? Right? Like feeling like I need, so I always say, I intellectually, I knew that I wanted to get from surviving to thriving. Like intellectually, I was like, I don't want to just survive in my life. Like I grew up in a really shitty situation. I didn't like what was happening. Most people wouldn't like what was happening. And at still, I was like, I always felt like there was something more in my life. And I was like, what, what am I doing? My computer just started. Oh, I think Faraday's Bluetooth is connected to my computer. That was really funny. Um, <laughs> just like random music playing. Um, woo, so I knew my base emotion is joy, right? Like I've always been like, I want to follow my joy. I've let myself be guided by my joy after I left my religion. Like I had spent so much of my time serving others and doing what other people thought I should do in order to get connection and love and money and everything in my life. And I was like, fuck this. I have, I feel so full from doing what other people want me to do that I just want to like vomit this out. Like I was like, get this out of my body. And so I went on a trip where I just went, moved to Costa Rica and I traveled around, I rented a car and I just drove around like Nicaragua, Panama and Costa Rica by myself at 24 years old. And I was just like, I need to follow my joy. I need to figure out what this means. And this has been uh, almost a nine year journey since then of me following my joy and just doing whatever makes me feel good and money comes along the way, abundance comes along the way, love comes along the way, travel, connection, tribe, all of it. And I've had so many mentors who, and good meaning people, people I love in my life that are like, Brittany, if you would just stick to one thing, you would be a millionaire by now. If you would just focus on this one thing and build this out and make this into a global company and do this and do that. And I was just like, I don't care. Like for me, this is old world shit. I just want to follow what feels good in my body. Like my intuition, my compass was whatever felt good in my heart, whatever made me feel alive, because I had felt dead for so many years. I felt like I was internally killing myself because I was denying the part of myself that <laughs> that made me feel alive, which is me being my authentic self. And I feel like this is what a lot of us are waking up to right now is I cannot live for other people anymore. It hurts too much to deny who I am in order to get love and connection and money and whatever else 
the society that I grew up in tells me I need, right? And then you're like, well, what do I do now? And when you go down this road of disconnecting, unplugging from whatever programming belief system that you grew up in, there is a lot of layers to that. And like for me, one that I really want to share about is I didn't realize how much I viewed productivity, like being efficient, getting things done as the most important thing. Even though I live in Thailand and I'm very flowy and like my life, I've been following my joy for nine years. It's like, I still was like, at the end of the day, I was like, oh, how, what did I get done today in the 3D? Like, what, can, what did I get done on my to-do list? And even though I run my own companies, I do whatever I want to make money and I don't run by, I don't have appointments or anything. I still was checking my clock in the morning. And like when I would wake up and lay in bed, I would look at the clock time and be like automatically programming myself still from birth. This is how we've been programmed is look at the time, see how much time I have to do whatever I need to do next. And it just feels like you never have enough time because you're putting yourself in this mental prism of I need to get the maximum amount of things done before the day is over. And it's like, who created this belief system? Because you never are going to feel satisfied if you are, or if you are satisfied, at the end of the day, what I realize is if I, I've had a lot of people die in my life and what I realized organizing their funerals is that no one at my funeral I, I don't want people to be like Brittany was very productive wow she got a lot of things done like who gives a fuck like what how efficient I was and how much money I made and whatever I got done on my to-do list it's like did I feel joy? Was I connected to the people I loved? Did I make beautiful things in the world through my own self-expression of my authenticity? Like who I was as a being, was it shared with the world in a way that made me light up? But that's what I want people to talk about if and when I die. And this is something that has like really been sinking in with me recently. And <laughs> I did, I, I can't show you cause I'm filming with my phone, but I turned my, on the front of your phone, you can, I, I haven't figured this out. If you know how to do this, you can let me know. You, as far as I know, you can't turn off the time display. Like once you like turn on your screen, I have an iPhone and so, but I was so tired of seeing my time every time I like turned my phone on. Like a lot of times I use my phone for photos or for a flashlight or something. And I didn't want to know what time it was because it kept getting into my head still. And so <laughs> I was saying this to Faraday that I'm like, I wish I didn't have to look at my time. Like a lot of times I put my phone face down because I don't want anything to do with the time. I don't care about the time. And it still is this programming that gets into me. Once I see it, I start judging myself of have I got done enough today or, you know, like, oh, did I get this done in the time that I said I wanted to make a podcast? It's like I start making it not fun. Like it's like these are things that are my joy, but I'm still putting it in this programming of efficiency and productivity. And so I begin to hate it because I, I don't I want to follow my joy. I don't want to cater to something on a, a checklist like to me that makes it very clinical like sterile it's like there's no heart there's no soul in it anymore anyway so Faraday being his amazing Virgo self figured out that you can change the time on the clock to a different language and so now I have the time on my screen as I think it's Arabic or something that it looks like um yeah, it looks like ancient cryptic text that I can't, I don't know what time it is. And so, and it's funny because throughout the day, it still does like synchronistic, like displays of symbols of like the time. But Faraday keeps being like, oh, look at, and this means this now, because he also changed it on his phone. And I'm like, don't tell me what it means, because then my brain will start like being like, okay, that means 1717 or whatever, whatever. I still, I want to look at it and not know what it means and have it mean nothing to me. 
And he's like, well, well, eventually you're going to figure out what it means. And I'm like, yeah. And then I'm going to change it to something else where I don't know what it means again. So that has been, I'm sharing that with you because that has been so helpful for me. And I also feel really grateful that I've built a life. I have chosen and step by step, I have built a life where I don't need to know what time it is. Time You know, when you really understand the universal message, you understand how the structure of reality works, you realize we create time. When you are in this flow state where time does not matter and you don't notice what time it is, like say you think about like an artist who's painting and suddenly the whole day goes by, right? The the time that you actually notice is the time that you experience. So when you're in flow state and you don't notice that there's no time past, No time has actually passed. We create time by paying attention to it and putting ourselves in this box of reality where time matters and all of these things. And for the last four years since I've been on Copanyang, I don't really look at the time. And so I literally, and also being deep in nature and connected to nature, I literally feel like I... I feel like I look younger and I feel younger and I feel healthier because I don't feel like I'm experiencing time in the same way that other people are. And this is why I joke that like time is like a very funny thing for Faraday and I because like we are just so in the now and everything that's happening right now that when you say, oh, yesterday, or like sometimes we'll say like this happened, yes, like this happened this morning or the yesterday, it feels like weeks, like in linear time, it feels like it could have been like months ago or a week ago. And people who live on Copenhagen, we know this because time moves very differently here, that like a week on Copenhagen can feel like three months somewhere else, just because you are so in the now and you are so present with what's happening that you are actually living life more fully and you are paying less attention to time. So you're actually getting more out of the experience. So for a while I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what is my measuring stick? Like, how do I measure if I'm actually happy and like thriving in my life? And this is where I was realizing that I was using like old world mentality of still measuring it by how much I got done. And, and it was like getting stuff done on things I care about, like, you know, writing my book or making OnlyFans content or working on my music. I'm learning to DJ right now and downloading music and like, okay, how much time did I spend today like vibing? And I, I get when I'm in that, I'm, I'm so excited that like, I don't know what time it is. I don't know what's going on. I don't care. I'm having so much fun. And I get up when I'm, especially when I'm DJing, I get up and I just get so excited that like I dance around the room and I go and jump on Faraday and I'm just like I'm so happy that I'm finally doing this and he's like yay and we celebrate it together and so I realized I was like productivity is not the measuring stick for me right like I don't want at the end of the day like they I have this thing where I talk about what I'm grateful for at the end of the day and this is something that's been like really helpful for me I I recommend this like if you want to bring more joy into your life I give you homework to do which is in the big for one week when you first wake up write like a whole page of whatever you are grateful for and when you fall asleep write whatever you're grateful for and it can be whatever happened that day it could be people that you love it doesn't matter if you keep repeating it over and over it's emphasizing to you and your psyche that you are abundant and that you are good right now. You do not need to strive for anything more. So I do this a lot. Like I don't need to write it down anymore. I've done it. I've done gratefulness lists for so many years. So a lot of times when I first wake up, I think about what I'm grateful for and I send people that I love, like love energy and I manifest in my head like the vision of whatever I'm creating, like this new earth vibration here on Copenhagen and a place for me to feel safe to have babies and like all these beautiful things, right? But I was like, I really still, my, my physical mind still needs to figure out, am I good? Like, is it protecting me? Is it, do I feel safe and abundant? And like, can it just chill? And so what I am choosing to reprogram myself right now is 
having the belief that joy is my measuring stick. So at the end of each day, I ask myself, not how much did I get done on my to-do list today? I ask myself, what did I do today that brought me joy? And so for instance, yesterday, I DJed in the morning, I went to the beach with Afro and meditated and did some rape. I connected with some friends, Faraday and I went to the waterfall for hours and were in the water and, you know, I made a podcast at the waterfall. All of these things bring me so much joy. Just being at the waterfall brings me so much joy, like deep in nature where it's energetically clean and the nature really speaks to me and I feel so refreshed by the water. And then we came home and we got our favorite Thai food to go, like healthy, yummy, like amazing Thai food from our Thai mama who puts lots of love into it. We got got it in our Tupperware and we went to sunset and it's been cloudy here for a couple of weeks. And yesterday the sun came out and it was like, if you've never been to Koh Phangan, it has some of the best sunsets I've ever seen. I've been to over 60 countries around the world and... (laughs) It was just like, it just kept giving. Like, you're like, wow, it's so beautiful. And then 10 minutes later, it changes into something else. You're like, whoa. It's like, it was like one of the most beautiful sunsets I've had on the island. And I've had a lot of sunsets here. And I was just in the, it was like so beautiful that people stopped talking and just were in complete presence with nature. Like, we were all just like, what the fuck? And just, you know, I was just in the water. I'm just staring at the sunset. And I'm like, it's so beautiful and all of these things brought me joy you know and we got home and Faraday's been like playing Christmas music a lot because he's like the first time that him and I got together um I got together (laughs) that's a funny question or a funny thing to say the first time that Faraday realized that he was into me romantically was six months after we met and we already hosted a play party and I went to his retreat and he came back out and went to my play party here in Copenhagen and then we were doing an integration day the day after the play party last November and we're all like here in the collective we put the mattresses in the living room we're all like cuddling and doing they're just talking talking about our how how the play party was and and just connecting and stuff and someone offered to do breath work for the group and so we did this big like group breath work session where everyone's breathing together and like laying down and they call it rebirthing breath work so you ever heard of that it's really powerful um I was really tired I had just hosted a play party the night before and was hosting the integration round and I was just like I'm happy everyone else is vibing I just want to like close my eyes and chill I didn't feel like breathing deeply uh, and Faraday was also kind of in the same mode or I don't know we somehow ended up cuddling while everyone else was <laughs> breathing and people were crying because they're having spiritual experiences and Faraday and I are just cuddling and and then he whispers to me it feels like Christmas and I was like I don't know what that means because <laughs> I grew up not celebrating Christmas as a Jehovah's Witness But now I'm starting to understand what he means. And so now he's been creating these Christmas vibes when we, so last night he came home, we came home together and like, he's been putting on Christmas music and we get cuddled and we brought the mattress in the living room and we, we cuddle and watch like, we've been watching Harry Potter. I've actually, I don't know if I've ever seen the full series. I read the books when I was young, but, um. It's just been fun to like cuddle and watch something and just give ourselves full permission to like just be and just be like, we have arrived. We don't need to do anything. Everything's amazing. And that's what he was saying he loved about Christmas. It was like the kids could just be kids. They didn't have to do anything. And the parents were so happy. And everyone was just vibing, you know. And so Faraday's like, I want to make a whole Christmas life. So we did that. And so when I laid down last night, I was like, wow, I I had so much joy today. Like I really, I really felt like on the measuring pole of do I have, am I successful in my life? Am I satisfied? I'm like, fuck yes. I have so much joy and doing it in such a flowy way where I have no clue what time it is. I'm just vibing. I'm like deep in nature most of the time. 
Afro is with us. That my dog is with us the whole day. Faraday has gotten to the point where she's coming to the gym with us. And it just makes me so happy because everyone loves her. And she's what I call a therapy dog where she like loves, she loves like receiving love from people and transferring it to love. Like people like go up to her and they pet her and she's like, oh, I love you. And then they hug her and they're like, wow. And everyone has this special connection with her. And, and to me, that makes me feel so happy to like, and she just loves it. You know, she's, we joke that she's a little attention whore in the best way possible (laughs) because, um, but it's like in this beautiful cycle, like this is what, this is what I feel like creatures are. It's like our best friends. Like Afro is not, I don't own Afro. Like she's my child and I love her. And I, we joke that she's our first hybrid child because, She really has a mind of her own. She only does whatever she wants. I've never really had her on a leash. She's always like comes and goes wherever she wants to go. She just happens to love being with me. And uh, (laughs) every single morning we come and we all gather together in one big cuddle puddle and Afro just goes, "Ah, ah, ah," because she's so happy to see us, even though like she slept and she wants to sleep outside at nighttime to protect us. Uh, but in the morning she comes and she acts like she's never seen us ever in her life and we were gone forever and it's been like you know 10 hours <laughs> and every morning we do it again and I just love it it's like it is like Christmas I guess so I'm starting to understand this whole Christmas vibe Um, and something that I'm really realizing is that it is okay and I give myself full permission to follow my joy like this is the best way that I can help the world and show up is by me being my most authentic self thriving in the world and just beaming with joy and just vibing, having the best time ever. Because we are programmed to believe that in order to help people, in order to make an impact, that we have to suffer and that we cannot, we are not allowed to thrive unless everyone in the whole world is thriving. And it's that's such a false belief because it's not going to get us anywhere. It's actually going to just make everyone suffer because you have to hold the vibration and allow people to rise to the vibration of joy, of love, of peace. But if you're lowering your vibration because you feel bad for them or because you're, you have a belief system that you're not allowed to be in joy if people aren't in joy around you, then you're just going to make yourself suffer. Like there's no point in that. It's not helping anyone. The best way that you can make an impact in the world is to take up space and do what feels good for you in your body to honor yourself. And this is, this is like a really big one for me because I have spent so much of my time, you know, when I got out of my religion and out of this very abusive situation <laughs> that I was in growing up, um, I had so much energy to help other people because I was like, I don't want anyone, especially women, to ever have to go through this. Like, this is terrible. And if I somehow got out and I still have this extra energy to help them, then it is my duty to do this. Like, I felt like somehow like almost like survivor's guilt if you ever heard of survivor's guilt it's like say like you know you were the only survivor out of 20 people who died in a boat crash or something and then you're like why did I survive and this person didn't and then you're just kind of feel guilty about this and I feel like I had this a little bit I had like PTSD like post-traumatic stress and also survivor's guilt of like so many of my friends my my family they're all still in this religion which is super culty and brainwashy And I just see so much suppression there. And I'm like, I just want to activate everyone and help everyone. But what I realized is I was doing it with this energy of, I had to do this. Like it didn't come, it came from joy sometimes, but I feel like a lot of it came from a a sense of duty (laughs) that I needed to help people because, because I have gone through such darkness all of this stuff that people were dealing with around me in like my current reality after I left my religion, it just seemed like peanuts. It was like, this is not a big deal. Like why, 
why are you letting this take over your whole life, you know, and be the reason why you are not following your joy. So I was like running around helping everyone else follow their joy instead of, and at the same time, sacrificing my own joy. And so this has been a process. Like I've, you know, the first phase was like to leave the business industry that I was in, like working in law and then being a corporate business consultant. And I was just like, none of this is bringing me joy. And then I had to create the space to have the belief system that I get to make money. Money comes to me by following my joy, like abundance. I'm allowed to have financial abundance for being myself and by following my joy, right? And so I created this reality bubble where this was possible and I believed it and I really worked with it and then it came true. So anything that you choose to believe and anything that you, like I was listening to something the other day from Bashar and I really enjoy this as someone who's channeling an alien and I really enjoyed this part where he talks about the thing that a lot of people get wrong about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is you know, visualizing what you want to manifest and, you know, being the vibration of the thing that you want to attract. Because the the idea is that we're here in physical reality, but everything that we ever want and need is possible in the vortex and bet- in the spirit world. And when we want to receive it and we need to receive it, it will come into our 3D reality. So this is the law of attraction is whatever you, when you're focusing on it, you visualize, you do meditations, you get really excited, you connect emotionally, you celebrate it before it shows up in the 3D reality. I am all about this. I fully support this. One point that I heard the other day that I found really cool was that we already, there's, there's this thing of, there's this idea with a lot of a lot of attraction people that you need to get yourself on the vibration of the thing that you want to attract. The thing that a lot of people don't get is that it's not about you needing to do the work to do something extra to get on this vibration. It's actually doing the work to realize that you always are on the vibration. It's releasing negative beliefs that you don't deserve it. So you already are on the vibration to receive anything your heart desire, anything that you need, all of the abundance that you desire. But it's about letting go of any negative beliefs that are blocking you from receiving that. And I was like, whoa. So it's not about whether I'm worthy or what extra things I need to do, how many more times I need to visualize or manifest or meditate. It's realizing I, Brittany Bond, am fucking amazing just for being myself, just for being a soul on the timeline. I already deserve and receive everything my heart's desire, and I am good enough. I am good enough just for being myself. And whatever I choose to receive, it's asking the question, what do I, what would I need to believe in order for this to come true? So this is like, like I was doing this this morning when I woke up, I was like, I am, you know, manifesting our perfect home on the island. Like we want to keep this as a community space, this beautiful three bedroom villa that I have, the remote collective, do many events here, host all of our friends. And we choose, Faraday and I choose to have our own place that is within five minute drive of here that is a beautiful, clean energy, something up on a hill where we have a view. And what would I have to believe in order for this to be true? And so I was like sitting with this today and like meditating on it when I first woke up. And I was like, is there anything blocking me from receiving this? And then I was like feeling into it. And I was like, okay, yep, there is some things. Like for me, it's like, financial abundance like do I deserve this and flowing of energy and like this and that and I was like oh but I can just let all of those things go and of course I always I fairly jokes that like I always receive the best housing situations I've literally lived on some of the most beautiful villas on this island and around the world And uh, most of the time, it does not happen through financial abundance. It's through connections with friends and, and just like, just so many fun things. Like one time it was like, 
uh, I wanted to rent this villa and um, the guy wanted to rent it out for like a price that I didn't, I just at that moment in time could not afford. And then I saw that he had a dog and I was like, what are you going to do with your dog? He, oh, he was subleasing it for like six months. I was like, what are you going to do with your dog when you're gone? And he's like, oh, I'm going to put it in a dog hotel. And I'm like, what if I watched your dog and gave it so much love and took care of it? And like he wanted someone to cook food for it every day. And I was like, what if I did that and got half off of the rent? And he was like, actually, yeah, that's a good deal because that's the same price I would pay to put them in a dog hotel and they can, you know, live at home. And then I was like, bam, I got the villa. And like, so these are, and then it's like a fun story because it's like, yeah, I could just have the financial abundance and just pay it. And that's also where I'm getting to now. It's like, yeah, this is all great, but now I just want to pay it and just be done with it and have this clean energy and boundaries of like, I just pay you, you go away as the landlord and I just get to enjoy and receive the space. And I'm also totally open to receiving it in some other way, as long as it honors my standards and my boundaries of, I just get to exist here. I don't have to do anything extra. I just, I get to be here and rest. And it is a privilege for me to put my energy into this space because my, I know how beautiful my energy is and I know how I always make every single space that I occupy home and so loving and beautiful and put lots of plants and just really take care of the space so I don't know where I was going with this but that's something I wanted to share with you apparently (laughs) um all of this this has been a like this this whole thing about following the joy has been something that intellectually I have gotten for so many years I feel like on an embodiment level of actually like allowing myself moment to moment to follow my joy and really feel into my body and let go of this to-do list thing in my head has really clicked in just the last couple days and that's why like I I made this podcast the other day where I talk about it and I break it down into like the structure of reality and all of these things but I wanted to dedicate this podcast to this because I was like do people really get this? Because I'm only just getting this. And I feel like if I'm only just getting this, I feel there are some things that I could share that would be beneficial to the rest of you all. So let's take a deep breath on that one. I've been visualizing a lot lately of my future self. You know, we spend so much time connecting to our past selves. Maybe past lives, parallel timelines, or processing trauma or grief, or processing whatever has happened to us in the past on the timeline. And I feel like we could spend so much more energy in a positive way focusing on our future self in the timeline or parallel versions of us and other timelines that are doing things that are very empowering that we would like to tap into that energy. And when Ferdy and I took mushrooms with Carl and Eve um, in the Czech Republic, like in this national park this summer, it was so beautiful. And I went very in the spirit world and I got this huge download and it was my future self talking to me. This happens to me a lot on mushrooms where my higher self, my future self, the more, the me that is bigger than me right now is like, yo, this is what's up. This is what you need to do next. If you want to step into your power here, let's go. And I'm like, ah, I'm listening. (laughs) Okay. What do I got to do? And then I always do it and it always works out. One of the things that I did in the past when I had one of these moments with my higher self was she was like, you need to sit down and to talk with women. You need to empower the women in your life. Because my aunt, um, I was very close with my aunt growing up. She was the only one in my family who looked like me, who was like me. She left the religion that I grew up in and moved to San Diego and (laughs) dated a black guy and was just like very cool and I was like, I'm going to 
move in with my aunt when I grow up. That was my thing when I was little. I was like, I'm going to go live with my aunt in San Diego. I, li- I grew up in Northern California. And San Diego is on the bottom on the beach. And I was just so excited to live with her. And then at 30 years old, she got breast cancer. And at 32, she died. And it was so painful for me as a kid because she was the only one in my family who I really felt like got me you know and I was 12 when she died and all of my cousins got to go into her room and pick something to remember her by and then she asked my my grandparents to give the rest of her things to me like we all we had this connection right so I wore a lot of her clothes growing up I had a lot of her things that were very impactful to me and my Mr. Piggy um, stuffed animal that I have it actually means a lot to me because the main stuff like stuffed animal that I got from her was a stuffed animal piggy and um, I lost it in all of my moves and I'm still really sad about that but like I would sleep with that at night from 12 years old onward because it would remind me so much of her and so when I got Mr. Piggy my stuffed animal that you guys see in all my social media it's like reminds me a lot of her and on this mushroom trip I was connecting to her spirit so much and I was like I just wish that you were here like I love you so much and there's so much I want to show you and like she was the closest I had growing up as a empowered woman in my life and I feel that it took so much of her strength to be that that it that it was like she couldn't last you know like she didn't have enough support for herself in order to stand on her own. And I think it just, it literally ate her away from the inside out. And when I connected to her energy, when I was on mushrooms, my higher self was like, she's here. She's rooting you on. She's like watching everything you do, all the travels that you do, all the adventures that you go on. She's so proud of you. And if you really want to like give back to her and like love show your love for her then you need to like it kept saying you need to sit with women and i was like what do you mean sit with women it was like just sit with them talk to them empower them and now i know that this podcast is one of the main ways that i can do that because i can sit with you and just broadcast this transmission out and you can just sit with me or walk in the forest and listen to me and get some of this empowerment um so anyways when we were in czech republic this last summer a couple months ago i had i haven't had a mushroom trip in a while where i really connected to my higher self in this strong way and this one was like whoa like i was just really in spirit and connecting to my higher self and she told me she gave me this vision of me being here on Copenhagen this winter. And at the time, we weren't even sure if we were coming back to Copenhagen because I was just like, last winter was just the most people that the island had ever seen at one time. And I just felt like it was so many tourists that it, feel like, it felt like it killed my community vibe. Like I was like holding this energy bubble of the community here. And there was just so many people here who were just taking energy and trashing the island. And it really hurt my heart, you know, like this fast tourism where people just came for like a week for full moon party or whatever, whatever. And anyway, so my higher self was like, no, 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 you need to go back to the island and you need to just be, you and Faraday need to be the coolest people on the island. You already are the queen of the island, Brittany, you know this, everyone else knows this and just enjoy it and just vibe and have the best time and just be in your joy. And I've been really sitting with this a lot. Like I keep tapping back into that vibration that I had on that mushroom trip. And I, I feel like there is parts of myself that I have waited to come into my full power until now. And I didn't even realize this is the thing a lot of times is like, of course we want to be in our full power. Of course we want to like, you know, do whatever makes us feel good and be these badass versions of ourselves and like live our most epic timeline. But some, a lot of times there's so many like fear 
negative beliefs that are holding us back and we don't even realize it's like these it's like someone putting duct tape on your mouth and you're trying to talk but you can't see that there's duct tape on your mouth and you're just like oh I can't get it out you know and then you just like realize oh fuck I don't have to deal with this anymore. Like my standard of how I want to have a friendship is rising right now. And I realize there's a lot of friends that are fading out of my life that I used to consider very close friends. And I hope and I I trust that they will fade back into my life whenever they need to. And also it feels so good to not spend energy on people who are not giving the energy back like to choose that the standard in my life is that I I view energy as currency so when you spend money on something you want to make sure you're getting something back that is nourishing for you or good for you or whatever it's your choice but you're getting something back when you spend money right I invite you to view your energy so this is your time your attention your love whatever is you putting your en- your energy on people in your life where the energy is coming back in a way that feels nourishing for you where you feel supported uplifted inspired connected loved and where it doesn't have to hurt like there's no negatives to this. You don't have to make yourself smaller for them. You don't have to be less in your power. You don't have to pretend that you believe a religion that you don't actually believe. Whatever it is, like with your family, your friends, whatever. You can just be yourself and that they hold space for you to come into yourself more fully. And I have friends like this. I have a friend, I will name him. His name's Alistair. I've had him for many years. I love him so much. And he will send me voice messages. He lives in Chiang Mai now, but he lived on the island last year. And he'll send me voice messages where he's like, Brittany, I know your vision of creating this community and you've given so much to the community. And I'm so proud of you that you're, you're, you know, you're starting to DJ now. Cause he was like, when, when you told me this, that you're starting to DJ, I just started like crying. Cause I was so happy. He's a musician. He's like, I was so happy for you that you're following your joy. You've given so much to everyone else. And now you are giving your uh, energy and your attention to yourself and what brings you joy. And of course, knowing you, Brittany, it's going to radiate out to everyone and it'll be something that's positive for the community. Cause this is who you are. And he's like, I'm just celebrating you so much and I'm, I'm supporting you and I, I'm sending you so much love. And I'm like, oh, these are the kind of friends that I choose to have in my life. And I love them very much and I appreciate them and I'm so grateful for them. And I invite you to also have these friends in your life. <laughs> okay, so I have two questions from readers I get a lot of questions from you guys on Instagram and sometimes I write write back sometimes I don't write back (laughs) and sometimes I share them here and uh, I respond to them so always feel free to reach out and also know that if you want more in-depth help and connection from me I do coaching I do a one-week coaching thing that's 222 euros and it's super fun I have many people who do it I usually only have like three to five people at a time that I do it with because I want to give everyone like a lot of attention. Um, so always reach out if you want more information about that. I'm going to read something that someone asked. I have two of them here and then I'll just channel the answers and always excited to hear what you guys think. Okay. So this person said, Let's take a deep breath. (sighs) Hi, Brittany. I have a question. My partner and I have a stale sex life at the moment. First of all, I'm pregnant and experience a very low sex drive. We've fallen into a routine of just getting it over with because it feels like a chore for me and because his sex drive is just as it is always was. Just as it always was. And this causes a huge bodily disconnection in our relationship. We have good communication and love to cuddle and snuggle. But when the topic of sex comes up, we feel more disconnected than ever. We talked about it and want to slow things down and build real connection and intimacy again. 
Do you have advice on how to or where to start? Okay, so first off, as you know, I have never been pregnant, so I don't know what it's like to be pregnant. Um, but I do understand the connection to your body. And what I found with a lot of my friends, I have actually a lot of friends recently who are getting pregnant, and it's very interesting to talk to them and to talk about their sex drives for things. I love talking about sex. Um, and one thing I want to say is that there is no one size fits all. For instance, something that a couple of my friends are realizing, they were like, I feel so judgmental of myself because they have friends or they've read online that when a woman gets pregnant, her sex drive actually increases. So this is like in their reality, this is what they're, they think is what is normal. And their sex drive lowered when they first got pregnant. And I was asking them, why do you care what is happening out there? Like this is your own personal temple and this is your own personal experience. And they were like, well, it's more that I want to make sure that I don't lose my disconnection from my partner. You know, like they're basically like, and, and then I, so, okay. Then I realized something. As women, we spend so much time and energy making everyone else happy first around us. And when you are pregnant, this is one of the first times where you really have to put yourself first. And it's ironic because you have to put yourself first because you are literally birthing life for someone else. So like there's this huge priority of, oh, I actually have to put myself first because if I don't, then I can hurt this like beautiful creature that I am birthing and I'm brewing inside of me. So if you, there has been parts of yourself that you have not honored, there's been parts of yourself or you have not made space for and followed your joy in and really f followed what felt good in your body, then those things are going to come to light when you get pregnant because everything is amplified and you can no longer hide from those things. You can't just make it go away. Uh, so it's a really big opportunity to check. And I have many friends who are pregnant that say like, when you get pregnant, you really check in like, cause this is not only my life for me anymore. This is my life for my future child. And like, am I happy in my life? Am I doing what I want to in my life? And what I would say to this, this beautiful listener who asked this question is, were there times before you got pregnant where you had sex even when you didn't actually want to. Like you're like, again, what I was talking about earlier in the podcast, this is a productive thing to do because my partner wants it. And so I'll check this off the list today because I want connection with them. And we don't realize how much, I will tell you, as a society, there is so much pressure on women to be like a sex doll. Like we are ready for sex. We will pleasure you. We are beautiful. Like this is the thing that matters is that we provide this yummy, cozy energy and lots of sex. Like this is what society, if you look at Instagram, you look at, you know, social media, this is what women are portrayed as. That doesn't make us feel sexy that doesn't actually make me want to have sex with someone when I have this pressure put on me that I have to be the sex object. That makes me want to say, fuck you, no thank you, you can get away from me because you're not actually connecting to me, you're connecting to this projection of me. And I'm not saying your partner is doing this, I'm saying this as a society, this is what we interpret as like women, right? And so this is like really... I've even felt this in my partnership with Faraday. Like once I'm actually in a partnership with someone I really love, it's like a lot of this programming comes up and I'm like, do I actually want to make love right now? And like, do I not? Want and what I realize is that because I feel so vulnerable in the safety of the relationship and because I love him and I love the connection so much, it's easier to fall back on these belief systems that we don't actually agree with, which is, I must give sex even when I don't want to. And and I realized that I was even doing this with Faraday recently where I was like, 
my my sex drive was lower and i was like this is so weird because literally in all of my relationships i have equaled or higher sex drive than my partner and i'm like why is my sex drive so low right now and i don't view i don't judge myself but at the same time faraday was feeling like he loves me he gets turned on maybe he wants to make love every single day maybe twice a day and i used to do that and now i'm like why don't i do that and i was like oh it's because I finally feel safe to really feel into my body, to actually open up on a deeper level. And in order to open up on a deeper level, I have to be really real with myself of what I need in this moment. And I have to release this programming and this belief that I am doing this, I'm making love with you for you. If that is in the program at all, if that is my belief system when we make love, we were only, I'm only going to open up so far. But if I am doing this because I want to, and I know that we can take as much time as we need to, and I know that it doesn't matter if either of us climax or orgasm, it's about pure connection, soul connection. And this is what I really had to, I got to with Faraday was like the, what I realized was I am done having sex for like they talk about like most people are in the lower chakras right like the first second and third which is our survival chakras and this is also our root chakra and our sexual chakra and for many years i was making love only reaching like pulling the energy up to these three right and so i was like and it felt good in my body but it was and then there would be moments with certain special people where i could feel the energy going all the way up through the top of my head and connecting to spirit while i was making love and with faraday this is the only way that i want to make love because i love him so much and i connect to him on such a soul level that it feels n like for me now the standard of sex is joyful and sacred it is no longer oh, i'm just feeling horny i want to fuck you in the dark you know like that is that feels disgraceful this feels dis disrespectful to me and i'm not saying that quickies are not fun and i'm not saying that you you have to ha do everything in a super serious ceremonial way. I'm talking about the energy that both people are coming into the situation with. Hey everyone, I want to give you a heads up that in the next 10 minutes, I get super intense in the podcast. The neighbors were being really loud and sometimes I'm in such a channeling state that I don't realize that they are being super loud and then it just kind of comes into this vibration that I broadcast out. And also what I talk about is something that is pretty triggering for me. And I feel like there's a lot of emotions that were still needing to come out from all of the past men who didn't treat me well. And um, so that's what you're hearing in the next 10 to 15 minutes. So just giving you a heads up. I feel like it's still, I still want to put it out there. I'm super excited. But I don't need to be in my masculine anymore. I don't need to be angry anymore. So it feels nice to <sighs> release it, let it go, and also show you that I feel the same feelings that everyone feels about these things. And also that there is another way that we can allow ourselves to drop into our feminine. And yeah, I'm just super excited. So keep listening and I will see you later. And I told Faraday straight up, I'm like, if you are coming at me with this energy of, I just need to get off right now and I just need a climax, I don't feel good in my body. I don't want to let you into my body. But if you're like, I want to connect to you because I love you and I want to make this beautiful love together, you can still be turned on. But if the energy is giving instead of taking if he comes at me and his dick is in his head and he just needs to get off, then that is taking energy. And I tell him, go masturbate. I don't want to make love to you right now. And I say it in a really nice way. I, I feel like I'm being mean to Faraday right now. But he, he actually, he only wants to make love to me when I want to make love. And he does masturbate a lot of times when he feels too, like his dick is in his head. And also there's been a lot of times where my past trauma and me not honoring my body has come up in our relationship and I'm just feeling a lot of constriction in my body and it's nothing to do with Faraday and he's just doing his best to host me. And so this is where self-responsibility comes in. So to this beautiful listener who asked the question, I will ask you to really 
spend time with yourself and ask yourself, like have a moment where you're laying on the bed and you're putting your hands on your womb and one hand on your heart, like your right hand on your womb, your left, wait, hold on. I don't know. I think just do whatever feels comfortable for you. So like, you know, like you're right, whatever. One hand on your womb, like which is, you know, your lower belly where the baby's growing, one hand on your heart and really ask your womb and your heart, what do I need right now in order to feel safe? What do I need in order to feel more connected to myself first? What do I need to speak up for in my relationship and my connection with my partner? Because it could be other things outside of the bedroom that is making you not want to make love. For instance, especially when you get pregnant, I know many of my friends, you go through what they call a nesting period where you are like, literally, is the environment around me safe for me to birth this baby into the world? And if the environment is not safe around you or if your partner is not showing up in a way that makes you feel safe, then you're not going to want to open your body to them. You're going to be in like protective mode. So yeah, that is a thing. It's just like, do you feel like there's things around the house that maybe they could show up for more so that you can rest more? Like, are you giving yourself enough time to follow your joy and to rest? Because whatever vibration you're in right now is literally being encoded in your baby. So if you are still putting other people first and you are still allowing yourself and choosing to suffer for other people and pushing yourself too hard, you are programming that into the DNA of your baby. So this time period when you're pregnant is the time period to really put yourself first and follow your joy and to rest as much as possible and to be in spirit as much as possible. I have many friends who gave birth and they say that the whole process, especially the last three months into the birthing, is literally like an ayahuasca experience. Like you're in spirit. You're so, you're, you are the portal that life is coming through. So you can choose to give yourself the space for this beautiful time period, or you can push and you can make yourself suffer and judge yourself that you still need to get things done on your to-do list. It's like society has like really pushed women into this corner of, yeah, just get pregnant and actually it's a liability. Like we might not want to hire you and like, can you come back soon? And at least in America, like you have to come back after six weeks of giving birth. It's ridiculous. But we as women, we can choose to empower ourselves by choosing to take up space. Do not wait for other people to give you the space that you need in order for you to thrive. Take up the space that you need. Speak up for yourself. Also, even especially when it's well-meaning partners and family and friends, like they want to support us, we have to tell them they cannot read our minds. And so I found that sometimes when I'm speaking up with Faraday, he is so loving and so wanting to fulfill my every desire. And I have just not spoken up for so many years that when I actually do, it comes out in frustration. It comes out of me not being very nice to him because it's like this like this communication, like your throat chakra, when you haven't used it in a while to speak up for yourself, it's like kind of rusty. So you have to, it's like a muscle. You have to keep working the muscle and then the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you can be in your gentleness and you can speak with love. So I hope that this helps you. Please know that there is no one size fits all of whether you should be horny or whether you should not make love. It's like whatever feels good in your body, you have to speak up for. And I feel that there is probably some things outside of the bedroom that need to be spoken up about or some things about how you want to be connected to in this new temple that is is you birthing and brewing this beautiful creature. So I hope that was helpful. And again, you know, I've I've never been pregnant, so I don't know what it's like. But I know that one day I would love to have babies. So I'm very excited for it. And I'm excited for your journey. Um, There's one more question. Let's just take a deep breath while I drink some cacao. Okay. 
This lovely listener said, I don't know why, but I feel a strong impulse on writing you this message since I look up to you so much, especially when it comes to owning your full power and how you show up in relationships. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. So I am 29 years old. I've never been in a long-term committed relationship, and I'm wondering if I will ever be able to fall in love. I've done therapy, coaching, put a lot of work and I'm still put in a lot of work and I'm still learning about relationships, communication, feminine energy, etc. But the thing is, I don't meet the guys that I feel attracted to. It never happens that a guy approaches me and it's been years that I have been catching feelings for someone or falling in love. I don't know if I really ever been in love. I feel like even if I keep improving all er other areas of my life, I'm not able to master romantic love and relationships. It's all meaningless anyways. And I often feel so alone and not worthy, not chosen. Maybe you have an impulse to share from your wisdom. A part of me thought you will, so I'll trust that. Thank you again for being you. Keep inspiring. First off, I just want to give you a big hug. Um, and also, um, I definitely know what it feels like to have so much love to give and feel like the people around you just are not worthy of it and are not clicking like where you're feeling excited and inspired um what what i'm sensing here when i read this is that you are probably trying too hard so <laughs> that sounds funny to say because in our productivity, again, this is going back to our productivity shaped world, the idea is hard work pays off. And if I just put tons of effort into something, it will pay off and I will get what I need out of this situation. And, you know, like I'll, I'll get my end result. Love, <laughs> love doesn't work like that. You do not. Unless you want to settle. So Faraday and I talk about this a lot, about how there's so many people in the world who don't actually have their person in the sense of like the person that lights them up and inspires them and is their best friend and turns them on in all the ways and inspires them to be this more full version of themselves, right? Most people want love so badly and they want to feel this whole inside of themselves filled up by someone else like am I good enough am I loved that they go on a dating app and they find someone who matches their vibration fits whatever external boxes of job social status looks and then they just get married and have kids and they start and then they're like am I ever been in love and they're like I don't know and it's like the answer is if you don't know the answer is probably no it's just like a lot of women have never had an orgasm and they're like if you don't know if you've ever had an orgasm, the answer is no. Because if you've had an orgasm, you would know. And this is the same about being in love. If you have think you've never been in love, you probably have never been in love. Like if, if, the, if it's a question, if the, the answer is probably no. Hold on, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. So the question is not whether you're doing enough. The question is... What would you have to believe in order for you to feel that you are worthy of receiving a love that matches your vibration? So what would you actually have to believe? And it sounds like from reading your, your question here, you said, I feel like if I don't master romantic relationships, then everything's meaningless. And so I feel alone and not worthy, not chosen. And this is where I go back to every relationship that we have, especially our romantic relationships, will mirror back to us what we view about ourselves inside. So if you feel that you are not worthy of this love, unless you have it, if you f like basically you're making it conditional that I will feel good enough within myself when I have this outside reflection. And this is like, going to a mirror and, and not smiling at the mirror, like looking at yourself in the mirror, not smiling, expecting the mirror to smile back. It doesn't make sense. So when you look at anything that you want 
in the world, you have to be that yourself and then it gets reflected back to you externally. I'll give you an example. I have had many loves in my life. I have been in many relationships and they at, they reflected who I was and how much I loved myself at every step of the way, right? And when Faraday was coming, before Faraday came into my life, I had gone through one of my biggest breakups. It's the person that I started this, cl- this community space with, the person that I went through lockdown with on the island. There was many, we made the most money we'd ever made together. We had people die around us and we have to organize their funerals. We went through so much stuff together and I thought this was my person, this other, per- this other guy that I dated right before Faraday. And I was so heartbroken when, when we broke up because I was like, I didn't realize that I was still waiting on this external validation of who, whoever loves me shows me how much I love myself. And the reason why I actually broke up with him was because I realized my standard of how much I loved myself had risen beyond how much he could reflect it back to me. Like I loved myself more than he was loving me. And for me, it no longer met my standard of how much I wanted to, or what I was willing to put up with in the relationship. As in, he wasn't treating me with love in the way that I loved myself. So if you go out there, this beautiful listener who's wrote this to me, and you are trying to find someone who matches the love that you love yourself in right now, currently, you're not, you're, if you're saying, I don't feel chosen right now, I don't feel worthy of love, that is the vibration that you are putting out to the universe. And then that is the kind of person who's going to come into your life, someone who makes you feel not worthy and not chosen. And this is how people get into very dysfunctional and sometimes abusive relationships, because it's matching the level of how much they feel good enough in their selves. And that gets reflected out in how much they're willing to put up with in someone and how they treat someone else is treating them, right? And so with Faraday, I, I spent a whole year where I was single and I was, you know, dating other people casually, but not letting anyone into my heart because I was like, I need to really focus on the kind of love that I how much do I actually love myself? Because I got the memo. I understood that how much I loved myself was going to be reflected out. So it was not about me needing to do therapy or do more work. It was about me allowing myself to receive more love. It was less about me needing to fix myself and more about me realizing that the love was already there and how much was I willing to allow it in. And this was a very scary thing because it's so vulnerable to allow yourself to be loved when you're in the first beginning part of this process. And then the more you do it, again, it's like a muscle. The more you allow the love in and you reflect it back out and you realize it's safe to be that vulnerable and that heart open, then you build this container around you of love. And then that is the vibration that gets put out. And those are the people that get attracted into your life. And so for me, I started working on this with the people around me first, my friends, my community, my chosen family. I was like putting a lot of energy into allowing myself to receive the love that was already there. So (laughs) I remember I broke up with uh, that last boyfriend before Freddy at the end of the year. It was like I broke up with him on my birthday because I was like, for me, my birthday is the beginning of my new timeline for the year. I, my birthday is October 29th. And then the, the January, I decided that I had never done a thing before where I was like, I want a word to represent my year. And like this January, many synchronistic things happens January 1st, it's a very beautiful day. And I kept having people trying to give me things, love me in different ways through their actions, through their words. And I realized, wow, this is my higher self trying to get me to receive. And so I decided that for that year, I was going to, the word I was going to have for the year was receive. 
And I was noticing and acknowledging and appreciating and being grateful for all the ways that I was allowing myself to receive love and connection and abundance and just receive all these beautiful things in my life. Because I was creating this container of this reality where it was possible for me to create, to receive a person that matched my vibration. Someone who was just like me, but a guy. Who, whose baseline emotion is joy, who loves building community, loves traveling, is a weird alien child just like me and is goofy all the time and loves making love and supports me just like I support them. And I was just like, you have, so this is something I'll tell you, you have to create this container that it is possible for this person to exist. If you do not believe that the person exists out there who can match your vibration and and match who you choose to be in your life and who you want to share a partnership with do you believe that this person exists if you don't believe that they exist out there they will not come into your life because whatever you believe comes true if you believe that they exist and that they will show up into your life then they will show up into your life it's so it's so easy we want to make it so complicated but it's so easy and for the whole year before Faraday and I got together, I was holding this container of this like energy bubble of like, I believed this person exists. I'm so excited to meet this person. I'm so excited to share my life with this person. And I know that by me fully stepping in my power more and more, shining as my joyful, bright, beautiful self, it will attract in this person. And that is exactly what happened. I was organizing my play parties and Faraday signed up. He came to one of my play parties. And again, at this time, I didn't know it was him. He was dating someone else or I don't know. They were in some sort of open thing and whatever, whatever. But he, he came with another girl. And when that happens, I like out of respect for the woman, I don't play with the guy. I just kind of like leave them alone during the play party experience. And so he wasn't really on my ra radar at all. But I just, but he told me later after we got together that during that time when he saw me like, you know, hosting the play party, doing the intro round, being my sexy, playful self and leading the party, he was just like jaw dropped, like in awe. Like he was just like, I didn't know someone like me existed. Wow. She's so amazing. So powerful. So beautiful. So sexy. Wow. So he was just like, oh. And I was just vibing, you know, I was like doing my thing. And then it took us six months, so like six beautiful months to get together. And he told me that he actually spent a lot of those months consciously and subconsciously getting ready to meet me in the vibration that I was at. Because he was like, I could tell that I had a lot of things I needed to catch up on in order to be able to match your vibration. And he was very excited to do that. And I was very excited for him to come into my reality bubble in a romantic way. So... To wrap this up, I will just re-emphasize you don't need to do anything else except for follow your joy and decide that this person actually exists and also know that you cannot have another person person fill the, lo the hole inside of yourself that you have to fill yourself of I am good enough, I am worthy I, to exist on this timeline. I deserve to have all the beautiful things in my life. Your partner can re inf how do I say? Reconfirm this for you, but they cannot be the main factor to fill that hole. So for me, when I got with Ferdy, I was a complete person in myself. I knew my standards of what I deserved in my life and of, that I deserved all these beautiful things. I knew I was good enough just to exist on the timeline. I knew I was amazing and sexy and beautiful and that I, I was good on my own. And Faraday was very good on his own. And so we were two complete people, two complete individuals coming together and choosing to be in partnership together. Most people today do not feel complete on their own and they are using a partnership with someone else to make them feel complete. And then what happens is you drain each other of your energy and then you end up breaking up or you do what many couples do in today's matrix is you settle and you just have kids and you have this friendship where you're just kind of like making things work 
but you're not actually super in love with each other and you don't feel inspired by each other's existence and you don't want to fuck each other all the time and you don't like you know what I mean like there's a there's levels to that shit so I invite you to really do the work on yourself in the sense of letting go of the idea that you have to do more in order to feel worthy of love that you are good enough on your own as a complete individual you are vibing so hard in your own life following your passion following your joy having the best time and then the person that is attracted to that they will come into your vortex they have no other choice but to be attracted to that because it's so amazing and the 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 vibration is so strong of bringing that in and it's beautiful and you have to allow yourself to believe it's possible and you have to not hate men <laughs> so many women are like i don't find any men on my level i don't i don't find anyone that i connect with i don't believe they exist and so I just am frustrated at all men. It's like, okay, well, if you go at it with that energy, you were going to get that reflected back. And so for me, I spent a lot of time also in the time period where I was really appreciating the men in my life, my friends, mentors, chosen family, the men who were showing. Like, of course, I always appreciate the, the women, but I was especially focusing on, because I had that to heal within myself. I'd had many disappointing experiences with men just in general, not necessarily in my romantic relationships, but just like in my life in general. And so I was really like, appreciating that there are good men out there that they exist and I could feel it on like a somatic level like within my body they were showing up in my life and doing things and helping me and just being amazing energy in my life and I was really grateful for that and that helped me to create this energy bubble of belief that this person is out there that is like that that treats me well respects me empowers me inspires me and I'm so attracted to them. I want to make love with them all the time and make babies with them one day and, you know, live our lives together. So I hope that this is helpful. Uh, I feel like there's so much more I could say, but this is where I want to stop. And the neighbors are making their noise. So I'm going to go to the gym and flow throughout my day and follow my joy. I mean, this is this is me. I am so vibing right now sharing this with you guys. And... I'm excited to make more podcasts where I'm just allowing myself to completely flow and follow whatever comes into my mind and be less structured and productive and more just in spirit and channeling straight up for you. So sending you lots of love and hope you follow your joy today. Bye.